So with me I have His Excellency Adama Siabra, the Ambassador from Brazil to Mozambique. Thank you so much for joining us here on our new Books channel. And of course, being the Ambassador from Brazil, I have to start off by asking you, how important is BRICS to you? Brazil has a tradition of multilateralism and uh, plurilateralism. So uh, we have a, it's in the DNA, in the, in the basic uh, tenets of our diplomacy, to have a kind of outreach to the globe and to coordinate positions and to negotiate and to be very present in whatever, which, because Brazil, this has to do with even the internal constitution of our country. We uh, harbor and host in Brazil uh, several dozens and dozens of foreign communities in which they are strong, first generation, second generation, just to give an example, Brazil is, has, bears the largest uh, Japanese community outside Japan. So our diplomacy has to reflect this kind of multilateralism and overarching stance of uh, negotiating and dealing with countries. The idea of BRICS, it was a, it's a theoretical concept, uh, as Jim O'Neill, as we know, the beginning of the century, and the Brazil embraced this because we are countries, the five countries, which they have lots of similarities, they have developmental challenges, they have social, huge social problems as well to tackle and deal with, but at the same time they have big achievements in economy, in science, in science development, in technological development, uh, and in the, in, in the fact that they are uh, regional, very important regional, and some of them aspiring to be global powers. But of course, uh, this, uh, this like-mindedness and this uh, 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 obliged us to coordinate our position, to learn from each other, and first to coordinate an international forum, uh, have a bigger coordination, and at the same time to have a kind of a different and very enriching perspectives for discussing world matters. Are you in favor of the enlargement of BRICS, and will it in any way dilute or water down the commonality between these five countries. We want to have a kind of a coordination and we want to be involved in the maximum number of countries possible, not only countries, but countries that reflect the diversity of position, diversity of worldviews, development strategies, uh, social experiences. Of course, this diversity is very, uh, is very uh, say, welcome always. So we, that's why we have uh, Brazil uh, is a kind of important and big player because we have embassies in many places around the, the globe. And, uh, and these embassies, they interact in the name of the government, of course, to enrich and the more than possible these exchanges. But when you talk about a, a kind of uh, a kind of international organization, international coordination block like the BRICS. The point is that this Brazil, with all the strength that it has, of course, we, we are involved in a number of, uh, I could say, uh, international and multilateral processes. Not to say, just to stay with South America or the Americas. Maybe there are, there are about 10, 12, even 15 uh, coordination mechanisms. And some are bigger ones like the BRICS. Uh, of course, ideally, Everybody could join in and talk, but for this we have other, other blocks. We have the United Nations, we have the African Union, we have the, the Association of South American Countries, we have the European Union, so, uh, and, uh, we have diff and we have uh, movement for uh, the former movement for third world countries, non-aligned and movement countries. So there's a kind of uh, proliferation is not a, is not a, very, is not a good, good word because it's welcoming in a great stance. But of course to manage and to deal with all this complexity at the same time even make, can make things more complex in fact. And on the other hand, I think we have, even though the BRICS has made amazing and ex 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 tremendous uh, uh, advancements and progress in many of these coordination uh, uh, stances, this is not a kind of opinion, this has been empirically verified by the acad academy, academic institutions, not only the BRICS countries, but even outside the BRICS countries that acknowledge and recognize this progress. Of course, we, have, we still have a great deal of progress in kind of vertical coordination, in-depth coordination, in this kind of uh, economic and scientific exchange, for instance, the coordination of the academies of these countries is very important because we have to know which are the strengths of each country and the contribution to this economic development. In terms of, of foreign trade, of course there are lots of, still lots of barriers between the countries, even the countries itself, certifications, uh, regulatory issues, uh, there are lots of things that can be, deal, can be dealt with before we can say, no, we are mature enough that we could maybe bring another country. 
and we have the G20, and we have the G7. So these kind of coordination mechanisms, of course, there's always one or the other who aspires. They're very welcome to understand our process as well. But of course, we don't want to replicate other initiatives or other coordination mechanisms that's still in line. South Africa represents Africa at the BRICS table. Can the same be said of, of Brazil? Are you representing South America at the BRICS table? What I, what I think about the, the BRICS, as far as I know and I'm concerned, uh, that the countries, the BRICS countries, they represent themselves for their relative weight. Uh, in terms, uh, of course, these are shifting things. Uh, South Africa is in the BRICS countries, and it's the, the, our latest, a former, uh, latest uh, member of the BRICS, uh, not because it's uh, specifically an African country. Uh, of course, it's very welcome. It's a good circumstance and a convenient circumstance that it, it can dialogue with other countries as well, of African countries, and bring their interests, as aspirations, and, uh, and uh, challenges as to the table in a certain aspect. But of course, we want to delve uh, and to tap into South African experience exactly in the multilateral experience, the projection of South Africa. South Africa, of course, is an African country, but the, the stage of its diplomacy and the pres prestige of its... When, when, we, when we see about, when we simply understand and try to, uh, to tap into the experience of South Africa in fighting against repression and the, fighting against, uh, uh, the fight against racism, the protagonism and the leadership of Nelson Mandela, for instance. Why is Brazil part of BRICS from the South American context in the way that you're explaining that South Africa is there? Brazil now has uh, more than half of uh, South America GDP. This is an important thing. We are a country which have a kind of uh, huge diversified industry. We have in Brazil right now, I mentioned about the Japanese, uh, huge Japanese colonization, but we have the Italians, we have the Germans, we have the Polish, we have the Ukrainians, we have uh, the Armenians, we have uh, the, the Arab people, we have the Lebanese, we have the Syrians, we have the Iraqi. So every, every one of these nationalities, and certainly I'm not talking about many others, they are very strong, they, they help, they are strong represented inside Brazil, and each of those they have a kind of particular contribution to the formation of our national identity. So we are a diverse country, we are a transcultural, not only a multicultural country, we are transcultural, uh, more than intercultural or, or multi, we are transcultural country. We embrace and deal with this uh, diversity all the time. Uh, we, have, uh, we have an international projection, of course, not only because of economy, but also because of the authority of our diplomacy as well. Brazil has fought, for instance, in the 70s, we had a pivotal and critical role in the agenda for decolonization, for disarmament, for development. We had later on a very big, a uh, huge agenda as well in environmental affairs. We are, we, we are involved in this all the time, human rights. So all the important conferences of the United Nations, we were called to have a kind of a certain projection, a certain role. Again, it's not because we are representing our neighbors, which I know very well and I lived in all the, many other countries. It's not a matter of this. We have, we have interactions and we have uh, uh, interdependence with our neighbors in a different level in which Brazil projects itself to the international arena. Uh, we, we had, uh, we've been present in the mediation of conflicts or in several circumstances which have been called into because of the credentials that we have historically. We don't have, of course, all of them are, not all of them are nice historical credentials. We have, for instance, the shame of slavery in our 19th century, for instance, something, but which made us later on had a kind of a, a, a critical and crucial connection with Africa, which is part of our identity as well. So we, we are diverse in a way that other countries, they are not. So we, we have, due to historical reasons, and this is, we can call it history, we can call it chance, we can call it different circumstances, a bit of merit, whatever you put in the soup, in the hot, in this uh, smorgasbord, but at the end, these are what makes country representative in the world scene. World scene. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Paula, I'm a great pleasure, and we always be in touch.